Hi, welcome back. Back on the van project today. Fairly straightforward uh, kind of seat swapping and a little reveal later on in the video. It was, um, I think, £150, which I paid for it, and, and that was a pretty good price considering a lot of van seat seating sort of sellers on eBay are charging about £250, £300, especially if you've got to get it quarried or you've got to go to collect it elsewhere in the country. Turned out to pick it up, and it was only 25 minutes away. The chap turned out to be a subscriber to the channel and a really nice guy. He gave me a, sh a look around his van. He's actually done a transplant from a caravan, used a load of units and heating and just about everything and transplanted it into a van, the same van as this. So it was a nice eye opener, he's actually sold that, I kind of got the van bug and he wants to do a few more, I think he's done a couple in the past, but um, big shout out to him anyway, and this is the seat, so we're going to hopefully, it's a two bolt in and out, hopefully the other one will come out fine, this one will go in, upholstery is a little bit different. We'll probably leave it as it is for now. We can always get covers to match, you know, so it all ties in. And then also, whilst I was there, he finished his conversion, selling his van. And when he took apart this caravan, I assume that's where these came from, he had a handful of these blinds and he was going to chuck them away. So he's given those to us. Not sure how many we can use, but we can certainly try and get away with um, maybe a couple in places. This, this is one of the big ones. They've all got uh, the blackout blind and the screen net. Now, all our windows are fixed, so there's no point in having the netting, so it will just stay up there. Um, but the blackout blind might be quite nice. And if we can trim in timber, box out basically all this plastic so we don't really see it, and that's hidden up in the re a reveal somehow, uh, it could be quite nice. This one isn't quite big enough for the side window, but we've got a handful here, and I think I worked out that some of these are, are pretty close to here, so it might be that we can trim out the side of the window just a fraction to, to make it match this, and they come with kind of channeling to go for it to slide down so it's completely blackout. But if we don't use them, then uh, I'll let you guys know and someone else might be able to use them on their project. Share the van love. Okay, let's see if we can make a bit of space and get one of these seats out of the way. There's the tool tray under there which we need to shift out the way from the front and then we can get to some of the space. That's the two bolts, it surely can't be that easy. I think it could be that easy. I don't believe it, that's the easiest thing we've ever done on the van. Now why isn't every job that easy? So we've got two connections here, we've got no airbag on the passenger side anyway, I don't think, no. So they weren't ever connected to the old seat, whether there's a connection on the new one, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but otherwise they stay as they are, we'll just tidy them up. So there's a pretty good level of foam insulation under here, which is more for the sound deadening I guess than anything. Uh, there's about 30, 40 mil, so that's, that's fine and uh, we could go to the effort of kind of taking all this up and, and cleaning everything and putting more sound deadening under there, but I don't think that, I think that'd be going beyond what's needed. 
so you can probably see the difference in the upholstery you know it is what it is um, and like I said we can always get you can get pretty good tailored covers for these now the the main bits the actual the side kind of bolster the, gr the gray part and the back is the same the headrest the same so just one of those things that you might not even notice unless you were pointed out one thing to mention is these ones are a lot more comfortable when Joe's traveling in the front she's not that keen on this one just because it is just it is what it is as far as the angle you can't change the you can't recline it at all and for, for a long journey which you're probably going to do in a camper van they're just not great whereas this one is the same as the driver's seat in that you can do you can move it however you want and the real benefit is that we're going to be able to get some swivel plates um, on both front seats so we can spin them round where the dining area is going to be. Now you can get a swivel plate for a double seat but they're a bit of a faff. You've got to kind of undo the, the, the bolts and then you kind of slide it and you work it round and I'm sure it, you'd probably get pretty efficient at it but we want to also place our leisure batteries under these seats and I don't think we'll be able to do that if we were trying to do a swivel on the double seat. At the moment, because the front seats are quite a lot higher than the back of the van, you feel like there's a bit of a, a separation between, you know, if you just need to lean back to check they're okay or pass them something, it's a real pain. You can't, you simply can't do it. So this just is going to give it a little bit more of a regular car feel at the front, which is a bit nicer to travel in, I think. I just had a bit of a brainwave. I wonder if there's any way we could transplant this material from here because it's only this section across to this seat I guess that's a full off that's a, a proper upholstery job isn't it it's a shame because it it really is just that section nah. seats in now really nice and secure but I did say it was going to be too easy <laughs> and the reason is we haven't got a seat belt receiver so we need to relocate one from the old pair onto here to invest in some Torx bits for my impact driver now. God, this is hard work. So if anyone's just starting out on a van conversion, especially if it's a, a relatively modern vehicle, um, then you're gonna need a set of these, which rather than an Allen key, it's a Torx shape. It's kind of more of a star. And a vast majority of the stuff in these vehicles uses this rather than a conventional nut or bolt or a allen key or screwdriver so they're fairly inexpensive if you just buy a set like this but well worth it certainly a lot more emphasis put on safety for the driver than anyone else i guess most vans are driven by one person only but we don't have any of the uh the preloading sort of mechanism or electrics on this side nor is there an airbag in the dash, so there's actually no electrics to mess around with here at all. Now 
So once I'm getting this last bit on, I'll give you a bit of a idea of what's coming up next on the van. Um, I, take, I took a break from the van videos, as you'll know, whilst I got kind of had my head around the stair restoration. That's still not finished, but I'm quite keen to do it a little bit more on the van before winter really sets in. Uh, so we need to finish the the real internals of the van. So there's a bit more of the insulation to do. All the wall panelling uh, I want done so I can then come in and paint uh, and get everything just kind of a really nice blank canvas fully insulated and we know that we can really hit the ground running with the interior fit out. So with the rest of the build um, I'd like to think that we can get quite a bit done over winter in that I can get a lot of the internal stuff built in the workshop. Um, I don't need to necessarily be in the van. Uh, but there will, we might slow down a little bit. So you just have to be patient. Uh, it seems to be that a lot of people are quite keen to follow the van project but perhaps uh, weren't aware that the channel is very much a diverse channel. We're quite focused on getting the house finished still. And there's also, you know, other videos that we do just on our general sort of uh, DIY life. So you've got to be patient. I'm getting emails from people saying where are the van videos and being quite demanding. And at the end of the day, it, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best here. Um, and, I, you know, I still have a day job and I'm trying to, trying to get videos out when I can. So if you can bear with us, we're going to get there. We're not going to leave the van half finished. Um, but, you know... Don't go pestering me too much. So the, the space up the middle, this aisle, is pretty, pretty narrow. But we can certainly squeeze through where we need it. Right, so I promised you a reveal. Wow, we've got a bit of a space age background going on there. Um, I promised you the reveal, and that is our power system, our electrics have all arrived. And I'll give you a little look at this. We'll look at this in a future video when we install it, but just to give you an idea of the route we're going. As you'll know, I am all for DIY, and most, or many, van conversions do all their electrics in a DIY form. They buy all the components and all the switches, the fuses, and kind of make up their own control sensor, their own board, and buy all the meters for the battery level and the water levels and all that sort of thing separate. And that's fine, and it does save money. Um, but when it comes to the electric, for me, if there was anything we do on the van, I'm happy to spend a little bit more there and speed things up by buying a, a purpose-built unit. It wasn't crazy amounts more, by the time you buy high-end individual components. Uh, and I've also got a friend who is uh, a, a vehicle electrician, uh, kind of a, a van and bus electrician. So he's gonna give me a hand as well. So this is the answer to our electric system. It's a pre-made unit made by a company here in the UK called Sargent. They tend to make these for all the professional co or coach-built pre-made motorhomes and RV, you know, campers and all that. But uh, quite a few conversions, DIY conversions, use these as well. Essentially, everything's in there. In the, on this side, you've got all your 12 volt electrics. Everything's labelled up. It, it's pretty much a no-brainer as far as it, it's pretty foolproof. Um, if you need to change the fuse, it's clearly labelled what's what on here. Then this side is all your 240. So if you're on hookup, it's all there. Um, and we're going to have an inverter, but that will be a separate entity from this so that's that's the route we've gone very simple in that all the ports are on the back there's no you know wire to wire joints really uh, all this is pre-made in looms which is here so it's kind of plug and play in that these go into the back these go off everything is already color coded all detailed on there all the wires are pre-rated for the loads that they're going to experience and then all you've got to put is a sp crimp a spade connector on the end of your run to, you know, if we've got the lights here, run them back and you know where it goes into. So for example, on here, 
there are rear lights, front lights, uh, the fan. So all of those elements we've already started the wiring for. So the, the fan on the roof, the extractor, we can put in here. And then we've got things like the um, the roof lights, we can come in and we'll use the rear lights for that. And then perhaps any lights on the walls, we'll use the front lights fuse. So we can kind of use this to a certain extent how we like, but at least everything's guided on there and you know what's what. And we intend to lend this van out to friends and family and people. And if there's something wrong, it's much easier for them to diagnose this than it is if I've just strapped a load of eBay components to a bit of plywood and chucked it in the back of a cupboard. Not that that's what I would do, but... And this lot is all the 240, so all we need to do is put a socket, an external socket on the side of the vehicle, so if we do get to a site where this hook up and we want to pay for it, then we can plug in, we've got basically an incoming 240 and then an outgoing to any sockets we want. And lastly, there is a control unit. So this is the little control panel for that unit. There's not much on here that we need. There is uh, power for the water pump, there's power for the whole thing. You can switch here between leisure battery and vehicle battery. Now I'm not sure if that's to just get the volt, you know, this is going to show you how much is left in your battery. I can't remember if that's to actually switch over power supply or just to show what's left. I, I can't imagine that you'd be switching over to vehicle battery, but uh, we'll, we'll have to look into that. And then there's a, a light there which you could connect up to one of your light rings, just so, you know, whatever. If it's just entrance lights or the awning light, you could control it from here. And they seem like a decent company to work with. I called them up originally because I was like, how do we get the solar and the uh, sort of leisure battery to invert a bit and this and they kind of just explain that all that can run perfectly well alongside this and also you know this has got the charger in it so it will charge the vehicle back uh, charge the leisure batteries as well and it will charge them from the hookup so if you're on hookup you can triple charge in that way as well um, and that's the way we went <laughs> we're having a bit of a trial to make sure everyone's happy that aisle down the middle is actually quite nice. It really does link it all in, so that's all good. So I need to carry on with the insulation, but the next video we're gonna do on the van is gonna be to start the wall, kind of lining out all the walls and the doors, and we've got some good plans for that, for the paneling, just to kind of make it a little bit different and a little bit more unique, I guess, than just ply lining and carpeting it. Bye. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.